What's going on, everyone? So I, I think I already may have made a video about this, but I have a script I took from Nixcasts. I've been talking about Nixcasts a lot lately. I've been just going through it, re, re going through his channel and watching everything entirely all over again. Um, I do really enjoy his content, so do check him out. Um, there was a video here that he wrote about um, using Bash to make basically a small little program that works like flashcards um, using just a basic CSV file. Now, I am a real big fan of Anki, Anki, however you pronounce it, but um, like he actually mentions in this video, which I didn't realize until this time watching it, uh, Anki, yeah, does require GUI, a GUI, it is a GUI program, um, and there is a lot more than just simple plain text stuff to it. And we all know the power of plain text when it comes to command line utilities. So I really liked his script as an idea and I didn't really know enough bash to really be effective with anything like, okay, cool. Here's a script. I might be able to modify a couple small little pieces of this thing, but to really add and change some functionality of something, um, my skills were a little bit lacking. But also since watching his content, I've been a little, diving in a little bit more into Bash and I really took a good stab at this idea of a project and I have something to show for it. So I took, this is what his script was. This was all of it. It basically just spit out a very basic um, couple lines of text based off the CSV, a couple, three column CSV for category and question answer. And it just loops through and continues just shuffling up your lines of text and your flashcards. Uh, I wanted to do a little bit more on this and I want to expand on this. Now I'm, I've completed what I'm thinking about as phase one of my uh, project here where I got it doing a lot of the things I wanted it to do and looking the way I want. But now I want to actually add the functionality of a system that can like sort of change a, another column of each of these lines on the fly and it will like remember your answers or pull that line. And then in, depending on your answer, you can like, like Anki or Anki, give feedback on how difficult the question was. And then um, based on your answer that is done through text, it'll actually assign a numerical value and then increase this like point value. And then it will take your lowest point items and then take a grouping of those and then shuffle those and deliver those to you on a recurring basis. And as your point values fluctuate, it'll actually pull the things that are the lowest values that you need to um, study more of and get more familiar with. And that was like my grand idea for how I want to take this, but at least for getting something like, you know, MVP, minimal viable product. Uh, I just got into the zone today, worked on it, and let me show you what I got. So I do, of course, give like, you know, shout out credit to him because he did make the the initial part of this script. I would not have probably come up with this idea off the top of my head. So I do give Nick's cast a good shout out link to his channel in here. Um, I have a link to my website, my repo in the comments, the purpose vision for this entire thing. There are two dependencies, and this is mostly just because I really like how they look. They are command line utilities, so it is, you know, nothing's gooey. Um, but I do recommend uh, getting these utilities because it does make a nice preview for some of the, the scripts usage. So FZF and the um, Rust based uh, replacement for cat, which is bat. Um, but let's walk through this script line by line. But first, let's see how it works. So first, all I have to do is call the script flash. I do not have my flash directory set up yet. So do I want to make it? Yes, I do. And now it says I am your directory is ready. You even have a dex CSV file generated by default and ready for you to enter some information. Now it's in dot local share. And I did look this up. I was going to just do a uh, dot directory in the, the home folder, but you know, I know Luke for sure doesn't like it and I'm trying to minimize how many things I have in there. So I looked it up and dot local share is apparently where you store user data files that aren't like, you know, junk files like in, in dot cache. So it's in uh, local share flash. And so let's go there. All right, so we got dex CSV in there. Now, 
The way I have this set up is that you can have as many CSVs in here as you want. You can have as many directories, as many nested directories as you want, up to, I think I have it set to a default of like 999 levels. Um, it doesn't matter. So that way you could even, you can have like, I went to this school during this year, I had these classes, I had these tests, and then these decks are go to each section of each test and just have all this nesting and organization. And none of that's gonna matter like to the script. The script's just gonna pull out every single CSV file out of every single directory from the root directory dot local share flash. So I have deck CSV. So let's edit that and add some entries. So, uh, I was looking for a good way of delimiting this because certain symbols we want to use and I remember seeing that there was just a great way of doing um, delimited files and it was doing the same as um, Etsy password, which for those who haven't looked at it, um, Etsy password does a colon delimited system. And I forget exactly the specifics of why this was uh, more advantageous than uh, CSV, but yeah, I just decided to put it as this. You can honestly change it. The, the script is there and the script is actually not too complicated to read. So feel free to um, use that. Uh, yeah. So in Dex CSV, we're gonna add three columns. Each of the, this script has three main columns that it uses. The first one is category, the second one is question, and the last one is answer. So we're gonna do three different pieces of information. So let's do, the category is math, and then the question is two plus two, and then the answer is four. Duh. Okay, so let's do science. Uh, the earth is, and the answer is round. Yeah, I'm probably sure I just triggered some people there. Um, but let's just have you know two answers, two, uh, two pieces of information, two flashcards. Save. All right, so now if I go anywhere else, it doesn't matter where I'm at, I can call this from any directory. It does not matter. Um, I can call flash, and it will open FZF. And using bat, it will actually give this very nice preview. So this way, if I had multiple decks, it'll tell me the file pathway to those decks. So you could see like, you know, school, year, class, test, subject area, whatever. It'll tell you the full directory pathway from the root directory flash onwards. And you can pick your, your, um, your deck. And if you need to see like a, a preview of it, of which deck it is to make sure you got the right one, um, FCF has got your back there. And you can see this graphically. Um, so this is why that has the two dependencies. So I'm just gonna choose deck, obviously, and then it will open up your notes. It clears the screen, it has just your, um, the category, your question, and cards reviewed will tick upwards. I actually used it as an iterator to tell you when to clear the screen correctly, but then I figured maybe you wanna see how many cards you reviewed during your study session. Um, you know, I don't know, keep a high score or something. So. What's our, what's our question? Two plus two, well, that's four. Oh, yes, I was right. And then um, it, because I only have two entries in here, when it does the shuff command, shuffle, it's gonna do duplicates. But I mean, if you had a lot of other um, records in here for your flashcards, it wouldn't duplicate this often. So the earth is, ah, round, there we go. And so it'll just loop endlessly. You, know, you can just let it go and go and go and go and go for whatever. Um, it's super lightweight because it's simply just a CSV reading into standard out. And it just displays some text, clears the screen, displays text, etc., etc., And that's it. And I like this a lot better than how it originally was. Um, Nick's cast gave a great template. It really just gave me something to get started with. And... I kind of just ran with it. So now I'm hoping over time I'll develop this like Anki-like feature where I can keep track of some point values and you know increment them based on levels of difficulty and then you know do that sort of uh, system where you get um, spaced repetition of the actual information that you are not as familiar with. And then, yeah, uh, what is that? Uh, active recall and spaced repetition for the best learning strategy. So let's see what the script looks like and actually how to use it. By the way, if you actually do use this, um, 
I set up a couple exit commands. Like you can always obviously just do control C. Um, I think, yeah, no, control D does not work, but control C will work. And then if you do, um, if you're in the middle, like you just got an answer here, but if you're in the middle of a question, you just type Q, it'll quit. So I just figured Q is commonly used to quit applications like this. So I just put that in there. Um, but let's see what the script looks like. So I have, um, because I called it twice, I just made a variable for um, the creation message, but it checks to see if you have the flash directory in .local share. Um, likely if this is your first time using it, you will not. So it'll say, it'll ask you before it just does something, it's gonna be polite. It'll read your response, and then depending on what you pick, it'll, um, it'll create the directory, it'll create your first deck file, just deck.csv, um, just, so you have one, it, it's not necessary, uh, but you can like change that, delete it, whatever, and make as many as you want it of your own. Um, it'll then uh, capture your current directory wherever you call this script from. It'll then tell you, it'll then capture the directory where, Dolph, where your, your decks are located, initialize the counter, and then if you don't have any, I didn't want to like have just lines and lines of text and I wanted some of the line breaks. So I just assigned, you know, no decks is just the, this message. Um, it'll take you into the flash uh, directory where all the decks are located. And then um, it'll check using find. I know I've read enough about seeing that there's downfalls of using find and ls. And I honestly couldn't think of a better way at doing it at this point. So if you have some advice for that, uh, or some better, better best practices, uh, let me know because I couldn't think of a better way than this at this point to achieve this functionality. I think it just should just be standard convention that you don't put null, new line, or space characters in your file names if you're using a Nix-based system. Uh, it's just not even if you're using Windows. I don't do it on Windows anymore either. It's just not good practice. Um, but anyways, if you do not have any CSV files in the directory, then it'll say, you know, hey, you don't have one, um, create one and then it'll take you back to your directory you called the script from initially. So it's always gonna be polite and send you back to where you called the script from. It's never just gonna like move you and leave you there. Um, it'll then, if you have a, a CSV, it'll then use um, FCF to preview them for you and let you pick one. And then that pick will be used, um, it'll be assigned to the deck variable. And then the main function, which while it's true, runs infinitely, uh, will use a colon delimited file. So it's reading a single uh, line from this, or Q is being assigned the value of a line using the chef command from deck. So basically it pulls out a line, assigns it to the variable Q, reads it, and then you, know, you go through all of this. So if the counter is zero, which it starts off as zero, then you will read a blank line. So if the flash, I commented this enough because sometimes it is confusing. If the if it's not the first flashcard, if it's greater than zero, um, then you pause before clearing the screen. So currently it's zero, which means you don't clear the screen because you just call the script for the first time. But, um, well, I call it anyways, but yeah. Um, this was causing issues where it would just never let me display the answer. So I actually had to say, hey, if the counter is greater than zero, meaning it's no longer the first flashcard, then, um, just clear it, or I mean, let me read first, so it'll pause everything, and then it'll display the next section, clear the screen, and this is really for like, after you display your answer, pause, let me read the answer, then move on. Uh, it'll clear it, it'll print out some output, and then because Q is using comma delimit, uh, delimiters, or I'm sorry, uh, colon delimiters, you just print out each item of the array, and you can honestly just add more. Like if you wanted to modify this or had some better ideas about how to modify this, we could add as many fields as we wanted and just delimit them with uh, colons. Um, but then it'll read a silent, um, a single silent character, which in this case could either just be you hitting enter or any key, it doesn't matter what key it is, um, I mean to a point, but um, if you hit Q, that's how excuse me, that's how you quit, is that it's going to pause like after it asks your question and you're like, okay, I'm ready to see the answer. You can hit enter and then it works and works and works and works. But if you hit Q, it will let you quit and it'll take you back politely to your initial directory where you call the script from. 
um, it'll give you the answer. And then at the end of displaying the answer, it will iterate the counter plus one. And that's the script. Um, most of this I just wrote, rewrote today. Like some of this, um, all of this was really here. And this was the main, the, the main function and the rest of this down here. That's what was here minus some stuff in there. But I kind of just revamped, I think my Git log said it was like 78% of this I just rewrote. Um, but I'm really proud about how I got this working um, this way. I haven't gotten a lot of like in-depth experience with Bash. And this was a really good working experience that I'm actually quite proud of. You know, there's always room for improvement. I'm sure I did some things wrong or some things that could be better or more robust. If you have ideas for that or suggestions, you know, just leave a comment down below in the comment section or file an issue on GitHub. Um, links to all this stuff is going to be down in the comment section. Nixcasts, the repo for this, uh, check it all out. But if you like the the re if you like this you know script, if you like the program. Feel free to download it, fork it on GitHub, or just add some suggestions. Uh, it was a good project to really like, you know, a good project to try and learn some Bash on and actually implement some things. Um, I'm definitely big on project-based learning. That's the best way I learn being presented with a problem. Hey, solve this. This is why I learn the most when I'm usually at work because they give me problems, I have to solve them. Um, but this was a nice, something fun I just got sucked into and now I'm hoping I can avoid having to use Anki as the GUI application to achieve my flashcard studying. And in this case, I can just use plain text. I really like this. So let me know what you guys think. If you use it, I'd love to hear about it. If you got some ideas, some suggestions, some changes, love to hear about those too. And uh, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. Enjoy the script.